Today we are going to talk about VR industry itself. First, free roam VR device available on the market. They feel dizzy while using VR. How actually full body tracking works after 40 minutes of game, you are fully wet like a fitness training. Our brain doesn't know what happens, it feels like it's poison. So, let's talk about the history of VR headsets. What was the first headset available on the market? It was a Google Cardboard. Actually, it was just a box where you put your phone and see the virtual world. It had uh, one big limitation. It just had three degrees of freedom. So you can't freely walk in the area. You just to see around you, see on the left, see on the right. So you can't move in the actual VR world. And actually, there was just one button to interact with the whole world. Still, anyway, it was a revolutionary for VR. A lot of game developers start making their own VR games and applications. But what was the next step? OptiTrack. What is it? The system contains a set of cameras installed around uh, your building and around the place where you want to play the game. It's like a pretty fast and expensive cameras. You put a lot of trackers inside this area to track, like you have trackers on hands, on hat, on the headset itself. This camera detects these trackers and can compute the position of this spe specific uh, tracker and updates its position in the game. This system is still pretty popular and used in motion capture for your favorite games and movies because it's a very accurate one. But the disadvantage of this system is very, very expensive. The prices start like from 20,000 US dollars up to 100,000 US dollars. It depends on the number of trackers and number of cameras in your setup. I don't know any use cases for home VR usages, uh, for B2C content and games. It's still the business solution to ca motion capture and whatever. But some of the arenas still use OptiTrack as a tracking solution because it was one of the first one and it supports almost unlimited number of devices in the tracking area. So now let's talk about the next revolutionary device in VR industry. HTC headset developed by Valve company. And why I think it's revolutionary? It now supports three degrees of freedom. You can just walk in your home. In terms of price, it's affordable for B2C market. And there are a lot of games available in store that supports this headset. How actually it works? So Valve created these base stations where you install them in your room where you want to play. It emits a light through the, uh, your room. These dots actually just the receivers of this light. And these receivers can understand the time when actual light uh, received at this point. And all of them receivers. So based on these math calculations, you can understand where the de actual device in the uh, space like what exact position of that. This was, I think, first free roam VR device available on the market. In the second version, we increased number of base station, increase uh, number, increase the frequency, how fast uh, you can detect the position. But in general, the algorithm itself didn't change a lot for time. Because of this algorithm, you can support extra devices that. So these trackers that you can put on heads or legs or extra devices that allows you to implement, for example, full body tracking. Uh, one of the most popular games is VR chat is using full body tracking a lot. Hey, what's good? How y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? Hey, what's good? How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I think you're curious to know what this device is. It's called Leap Motion. Leap Motion allows you to use your hands and fingers in the game. It supports uh, uh, hand tracking and some gesture recognizers automatically. We tried it in a few games and the quality is pretty okay. But the biggest limitation is that when you use Leap Motion like uh, for a group of people. Imagine four headsets in the same room. Every headset has its own lip motion. When we are too close to each other, it can miss the hands and it's just moving and glitching all the time. So they decided to leave this device and we don't use it in the production. But for personal usage, some of the games looks pretty awesome when you use lip motion. Some of the people say that they feel dizzy while using VR. Why it's so? Our brain has its own frequency and number of frames that it can 
compute per second. And usually it's uh, up to from 100 to 120. And the, if the VR headset supports less number of frames per second, you feel like some frames are missed and our brain doesn't know what happens. And it feels dizzy because it feels like it's poisoned. The, it's trying to clean the body and to clean the poison. Modern headset supports up to like 120 even more frames per second. It depends on the game developers to use and support this number of frames per second. Cardboard and other old devices, it was all the time. The second version of this VR headset doesn't differ a lot from the first version except uh, like a resolution of the image, like a headphones that they have embedded on their headsets. How it works in terms of math and lyrics is completely the same. They have the same joysticks that receives lights and detects their own position in the space. Trackers are the same and they're compatible between both versions of the headsets, but some of the players want uh, to use uh, more immersed devices. The easiest option to immerse itself into virtual reality with HTC Vive headset is purchase this thing where you can put your joystick and it looks almost like an, a real gun and you can use it in your games and shoot them not like with joystick like I think it's a little bit boring but with an actual gun. HTC Vive has one big limitation it supports only up to 20-25 devices to track only up to four players can play the same game if you talk about VR arenas. How actually full body tracking works in such systems? So usually you purchase like a four trackers two trackers you put on your hands two trackers you put on your feet one extra can be added uh, on your belt and system receives like five points your the system and the game knows where your hands are where your legs are where your belt is and where is your head because this is actually just one big tracker and how it works and people can see your movements how your body looks in the actual vr games cheapest option for full body tracking because like the price for one tracker like a 100 dollars so the full system costs up to like 600 max another big advantage of the hc5 headset it was this wireless device it supports it allows you to stream your favorite VR games from laptop and a gaming PC right to the headset. It supports you to remove all cables, but weight of the headset is pretty heavy and you don't forget to put your uh, power bank uh, on that on this headset. After 40 minutes of game, you are fully wet like a fitness training. VR trackers allows you to add some extra devices in your game. For example, you want to play like a, with a, almost a real gun. You can put a tracker on it. You know the position of the tracker and know where it is. And you can track like a shots and you can play your favorite games like the this such guns. For one who is ready to pay for extra devices, this gun I actually recommend one. It's not like just a box, I think, that you can put joystick in. It's like a ha it has haptic feedback and you can feel how you're shooting. Hey, who did that? Not me, I'm out! Not a lot of games support such devices because it requires extra development time to support their SDKs. I think the most popular use case is just VR arenas. So check out the VR arenas that support these guns. Come and try it. But what is the biggest limitation of such system like HTC Vive? The limitation is like number of players. And right now it's up to like four players. It depends again on the number of trackers. Do you use full body tracking or not? With full body tracking, it allows you up to four players only. And for VR arenas, it's pretty small number. And another limitation is this uh, wireless uh, thing, because it supports only three players in the same room because of the frequency. And it means three players can play without big PC backpack on your back and one still have to use it. Now we are ready to talk about next revolutionary device. It was like Oculus Quest 1. So in 2019, Facebook released new headset called Oculus Quest 1 and it's Chinese clone uh, Pika. Why it's so revolutionary? First of all, it's because of its tracking system. As you remember, HTC used, it's called Base Station. Oculus Quest detects its own position based on these cameras and it does not require any other devices to detect its position. It can be used in any room, in any position, it doesn't require any preparations. Another thing, this device doesn't require PC itself. You can just play games without buying gaming PC, but it has its own limitations, of course. The performance. 
is slow performance device, so the game developers have a lot of limitations while developing games for this particular VR headset. Comparing to HTC Vive, uh, where it has uh, full performance of the gaming PC, you can launch like a AAA games. On this device, you can play just pretty simple games in terms of the graphics quality, but still, it's revolutionary because it can be used without PC and it does not require any uh, preparations in the room. Of course, it means for arenas, you can play up to unlimited number of players because it doesn't have any limitations in frequency or whatever. Uh, so up to 20 players can play at the same game in the same building, in the same room. But Facebook found a way how to launch AAA games on this headset as well. So you can buy a gaming PC, launch your favorite AAA game like Half-Life Alyx and stream the image right via Wi-Fi to this headset. Great. Lovely. Nice. Low performance device like a standalone headset like a Oculus or Pika use a tricky technology to avoid this limitation. How it works? It, some of the version uh, has like it's called Pro or Enterprise one. They has eye tracking. They know where the user actually looking at and it increases the resolution of this particular area we are looking at. It increases the quality of the image uh, overall because there is no reason to render the whole image that you can see in high quality. This technology called Faviated Rendering and it's a common solution with eye tracking headsets. It allows you to increase the quality of the image and the overall experience. If you haven't tried VR yet, what's the best game to try? My favorite choice, Half-Life Alex is my favorite game. It shows you the full power of VR and how great games can look like. Another game I want to recommend you, it's called Kernel. It's uh, the game that we've developed uh, for VR arenas. So check out the links under this video, find the closest arena to your location and try our Kernel game. So here you can see three top VR headsets available on the market. It's a Pika 4. It's Oculus Quest 3, HTC Focus 3. Uh, what's the difference between these versions and the previous? Actually, there's not like a big changes in terms of the algorithm itself. It's still inside out tracking with cameras. It doesn't require any gaming PC. But in terms of performance, it's like uh, the performance of this device is doublet or triplet even, uh, comparing to the first version of these headsets. The weight of these headsets is pretty light. It's more comfortable to wear such a device for a longer time. The resolution of screens is even doublet for these devices. So pretty detailed graphics, not still the same as a gaming PC, but it's closer to it. Uh, what's the difference between them? The first thing I think they can see the difference is the price. Pika and the Oculus close to each other, but Focus 3 is uh, more expensive. Why it's so? Because the main usage and licensing for this headset business, you can see like, uh, like this is one solution you can just replace easily on magnets. Uh, this one when you have a lot of visitors during the game or you can easily replace the battery. It's all about business and using non-stop. Another killer feature that this device has, for example, imagine you have 20 VR headsets in your arena. To put them in one a game, you have to calibrate device. For example, if you talk about Oculus Quest, you have to calibrate every device that you have in arena, so 20 of them. This device has a feature that allows you to share the tracking system between all devices. And you have to just to cal calibrate just one device and the, its calibration will be moved to other VR headsets automatically. So it's, yeah, it saves a lot of time. But in terms of price, this device like costs like three times than the Oculus Quest 2. And it's your decision, does it cost for you or not. In terms of personal usage, I think these two are the best one. Why? Because of the available games in stores. There are a ton of them. Oculus Quest actually uh, has more games available in store compared to Pico. If I need to pick one headset for my personal usage, it will be Oculus Quest 3. And I have this device. What is your favorite VR headset? Please leave a comment and let us know. There are a lot of hype around Apple Vision and other AR headsets. What's the difference between VR headsets and AR headsets? To be honest, most of the VR headsets support augmented reality mode, where you can see like the actual environment with some extra virtual objects on it. But the quality of the AR mode is uh, poor. Well, I think it's uh, not good. 
Want to be a little more specific? There's, there's good and there's not good. This is not good. AR experience with VR headsets has a poor quality comparing to Apple Vision. And that, that's because of the price. Like uh, Apple Vision price more than 3,000 US dollars comparing to the VR headset that starts from 400 US dollars. Anyway, this is a huge step for AR and VR world like this device and this looks very promising. More than 400 apps available on Apple Vision right now and we are curious to see what other apps it's gonna be. I hope it won't be the same like it was with the AR kit on iPads and iPhones. Right now we just use AR measure, the only app that I'm using right now. We will see what app developers uh, will get with uh, full power of Apple Vision. What to expect next in the VR world right now? I think it will be more about performance. First of all, these standalone devices have to improve their performance and allow players to play AAA games without PC gaming PC. Right now it's almost impossible without streaming actually, but still the, every new device is improving its own performance and uh, battery life. Oh, probably there is new revolution coming and we're all going to be in the matrix soon. We'll see. A lot of our viewers saw videos where people wear Apple Vision and walking on the street or driving a car. <laughs> What do you think about the future when all of us will be in the VR headsets on the daily life? Is it okay for you? Stop! Let me out! Let me out! I want out!